Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. I am your host, Nicholas Larimer, and today I'm joined by Mr. Terence Corrigan. Let us get into the news of today. The first story, and it's a breaking one, uh, being reported, I think, mostly by News24 today. But um, So we saw a report come out into the media uh, from Hamas, the uh, hardline Islamist group in in control of the Gaza Strip, which said that the foreign affairs minister had phoned Hamas to express their solidarity and support. According to Hamas's summary of the conversation with the foreign minister, who they did not name, uh, the South African representative expressed support for what it calls the Battle of al aqsa Flood, the surprise attack on Israel in which Hamas targeted civilians and took hostages. South Africa said Hamas stressed that Zionist aggression and the displacement of people from Gaza must be stopped and offered humanitarian assistance. Well, the media contacted the Department of International Relations and Cooperation, DERCO, to find out whether, in fact, the minister had had a call with Hamas, and initially there was no response. However, after a couple of hours, uh, they managed to get a statement released by the uh, minister, Naledi Pandor, who confirms that she did, in fact, have a phone call with Hamas. However, she denies very strongly the idea that uh, uh, South Africa had expressed any support for the killing of civilians. And according to the Durko statement, during the call and in line with government's position, Minister Pandor reiterated South Africa's solidarity and support for the people of Palestine and expressed sadness and regret for the loss of innocent lives, both Palestinians and Israelis. Minister Pandor and the Hamas leader discussed how to get the necessary humanitarian aid to Gaza and other parts of the Palestinian territories. Reports that Minister Pandor offered support for the Battle of al Aska Flood are untrue and meant to impinge the minister and government of South Africa. Uh, minister Pandor's call with Hamas leader is in line with South Africa's readiness to engage all interlocutors as part of a facilitating dialogue to end the conflict. They then go on to say that South Africa stands ready to mediate any discussions between Israelis and Palestinians. Terence, uh, this is a bit of a embarrassing episode for the government, I think. Um, we're never really going to know, I don't think, what was said on that call. Mm. But uh, what do you make of all of this? Well, I think note that the, uh, the statement from the presidency initially said, no, this this uh, this couldn't have happened because uh, we, we engage with governments, not with political parties. But um, yeah, uh, I think it's in, in in one respect it shows that that uh, our developmental state is not always as joined up as it likes to, like to believe it is. Um, I think that it, um, I think it's 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 important to bear in mind that Hamas has actually been been a um, uh, a guest at the at at ANC at, at least one ANC conference. So there is some sort of some sort of linkage there. The interesting thing, though, is that um, they talked about uh, getting aid to Gaza and other parts of the um, of the, the the Palestinian territories. Now, as I understand the situation there, and it's a complicated politics, and maybe I don't. It seems to me that that the other parts of the Palestinian territories are controlled by the uh, uh, by a different by a different faction. But at the end of the day. I, I um, suspect that 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 what happened was that there was, you know, some sort of uh, endorsement of the principle of resistance, possibly, you know, kind of kiss on the lip with no tongue, um, you know, not saying, well, we 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 actually quite cool with going and killing civilians, but you know, we are we understand armed struggle, etc., etc., etc. You know, leaving enough room for for interpretation. Um, I think, though, that 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 the big takeaway from this is that is that South Africa has actually con uh, uh, confirmed a measure of diplomatic legitimacy on um, uh, uh, on Hamas. You know, it says we are willing to uh, we are willing to deal with them on an almost diplomatic level. Um, that's something, for instance, they won't do with the uh, with the Taiwanese authorities. Um, so yeah, you know, I think that, uh, um, and as, as, as far as the mediation goes, that's just um, if if, the, if if that is meant seriously, it points to a level of um, of delusion that one can only sympathise with. Israel does not trust South Africa enough to to, uh, to do that, and as I keep on saying, South Africa has no expertise in the kind of issues that that um, uh, that face these parties. South Africa has nothing to contribute. The only thing it could contribute is perhaps the sort of 
bringing, you know, helping a friend to the negotiating table. But since it pledges solidarity with the Palestinians, and, seem, and that se seems to be read as we will do, we, we will endorse whatever they do, you know, it, 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 it surrendered that. So, no, sorry, folks, on both sides of, of the aisle, there is nothing South Africa can do. Nothing, nothing, nada. Once again, we've been involved in a uh, in a very hot button geopolitical conflict with absolutely nothing to gain for the country, and government just looks a bit stupid. Anyway, uh, let's move on to our next story, and uh, I must say the reporting on this one has been quite delightful to read because it's so filled with puns, and that is um, in an IFP led municipality uh, where where it rules in co collaboration with uh, I think one DA councillor. Um, yeah, this is the Ututukela municipality in KZN. Uh, the uh, government in that municipality appears to have built, it was building outside toilets for, uh, you know, sort of very poor houses. And for some reason, they built 15 toilets outside one property. This has uh, obviously, <laughs> was obviously not meant to happen. Um, and this is while, you know, KZN is a province where about only 50% of people actually have access to flush toilets. Well, uh, the IFP and DA have said that they are investigating the matter and they're going to try and find out what exactly went wrong here. Um, but the ANC in the municipality has gone all guns blazing, criticizing them, saying that the, the coalition government of the IFP and DA has a lack of understanding how the municipality should be run. Uh, their regional secretary said, just when we thought we had seen it all, boom, 15 toilets built for one family. The IFP DA councillors don't know that the funds they use to satisfy their political and narrow selfish desires are paid by taxpayers. The district community has seen enough. It is written to the public protector, human rights commission, you name them, but the situation remains the same. We are now appealing to the legislature to use their powers to dissolve the council. It has been nothing but a thorn in the community's flesh since 2021. Um, Terence, I'm struck by the fact that <laughs> this is not the world's biggest scandal. It's obviously not good. It's obviously a waste of money. Uh, but that the ANC believes that this is justification to dissolve the entire council and hold fresh municipal elections. Uh, it kind of makes me think about whether they should apply this principle in a couple of other municipalities around the country. Well, you know, we can ask whether, you know, what, 70 odd people were, were, were incinerated as a result of these toilets. Uh, no, look, uh, I think that, that Samuel Huntington said something like the price of universal principles is practical hypocrisy or something like that. Um, uh, yeah, look, I, 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 I do think that, that this, um, uh, yeah, this is, this is quite a bummer. Um, but, uh, and it, 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 it illustrates, I think the, the, the depth of problems in local government. These are not confined to the ANC, although uh, if one go, one takes a leisurely drive to the free state and given the state of the roads, that's probably the best way you want to do it, leisurely. Um, you know, it's... it's uh, they, they, they seem to have taken the uh, municipal dysfunction to the, to, to, to the next level. Um, but, yeah, you know... We need a kind of step change in the way that 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 gov that governance works, and as you say, this is not uh, this is not a good situation. Indeed, uh, but hopefully the coalition government will manage to, you know, scrub their way to the bottom of this problem <laughs> and uh, figure out what went wrong. No, uh, all right, on the air, doesn't it? It does certainly. Um, okay, for our last story here um we are talking about the now former public protector this is Sizwe Mkwabane who was removed uh, recently by parliament she has announced this week that she is going to be joining the EFF but not in any senior leadership position just simply as a humble ordinary member uh she has said that she was not joining the EFF to be fast tracked into a position and that uh, she is doing it because she thinks that she will be able to advance her work of helping the poor and marginalized communities. She said, quote, I think I will be contributing a lot. I'm an expert in good governance. I'm an expert in service delivery issues. The EFF has a voice out there and I will be bringing my expertise. Hence, I say I'll be working with the communities. Hmm. Terence, any thoughts? To quote Archbishop, uh, the late Archbishop Tutu, Mahis. No, really. Um, I, I think that that 
you know, as a as a good Marxist Leninist organization, they must be familiar with the uh, with, with Marx's phrase about how things uh, history repeats itself first as tragedy and then as farce. Um, you know, this was uh, this was the lady who um, you know one after another. Her knowledge of the law, the constitution, and the role of her office was shown to be, shall we say, wanting. Um, uh, this was the lady who incidentally wanted, uh, insisted that uh, I think Anne and Seven had to be playing on the TV shows and the TV screens and office. Actually, I don't have much of a problem with with, with Anne and Seven, but I do think there's a certain signifier there. Um, yeah, she was impeached. Uh, so you're not much good governance there. Um, and now she's off to uh, go and spread her expertise. I wonder why this country's in trouble, huh? <laughs> no, it remains a mystery. I, I actually, I can't remember the exact number of court cases she's lost, but an enormous number. Um, uh, you know, almost every sort of report she put out was challenged in court and would later be overturned. So uh, the evidence that she is an expert in good governance is, I think, a little bit thin on the ground. Anyway, that's all the time we have for today. We hope that you found the show interesting. And for today, that's a wrap. Thank <laughs> you.